You will sleep better than you have ever slept. You've never been this relaxed. Are you ready to change your life? I'm Rusty Diamond, certified hypnotist. You don't need to leave your house. You can stay in your bed. You can stay in your favorite chair. You just need a computer or your phone. You can get a hold of me. Stay at home. I'll make your life better. Hypnosis is great.com. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Well, I think I forgot how to pause it, and yo, man. Hello, oh, Miss Rusty. What is up, everyone? It is Monday morning here, I don't know, 9 o'clock, which is earlier than I normally do, but I wish I could do it earlier, but not everybody lives on the East Coast. Maybe I need to get more people who, maybe like just like 4 or 5 in the morning, people in Europe. Europe. Uh, you know, it could be cool. So thank you everyone for being here and listening to the public access podcast, the P podcast. Now the P -P podcast, the Pennsylvania public access podcast. I am your host, Rusty Diamond here on the Rusty Diamond podcast network because I needed a new network. So that's what it's called now because it ain't some bullshit. So, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, everyone, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. And probably thank you, too. So, I have special guests today. We're at number 496. Uh, we're in season 11 now. We jumped up since I started this show. It's been over 10 years now. Uh, started back in November 2013. Steve Magnuson. Portland, Oregon, Median. And you can go all the way back. They're all up there. And this is 495. We're getting close to that 500. What's going to happen on that 500? I don't know. We're going to find out. But I'm going to bring on a special guest right here, right now. And my special guest right here, right now is Andy Turner. And there he is. How are you doing, Andy? I'm doing very well. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, would you be able to turn your phone like that? Or is that going to screw stuff up? No, nope, perfect. Okay, cool. It'll uh, show up a lot better on the on the video that way. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank you for being here and, uh, you know, doing the, the Monday morning thing. Uh, what's, what's your Monday morning usually consist of? I'm a big fan of Monday mornings. Yeah, I, I am too. Um, I've never been the one for, for the mundane Monday. I, I, I like to get a good start and, and jump on the week and try to conquer as much as I can on Mondays. Uh, you know, typically I'm traveling, uh, especially right now. Uh, times are kind of busy uh, with the with the book tour and uh, and getting things started for the uh, uh, the movie production. That's have uh, that, that's had me going, uh, um, you know, pretty hectic lately. In, uh, lately, and of course the holidays. Sure. Yeah. The trifecta of those. Um, where, where kind of places are you traveling to? Are you going? Uh, uh, yeah, they, the, um, I was in Texas last week. Uh, the Before that, I was in Tennessee, uh, California. Uh, I know I'll be in Chicago and then back to California, Texas, New York. I mean, they, they, they've got me all over the United States. Uh, I do have a, a stop in Seattle. Um, and then I'll, I'm booked all through next year as well. So it's a, it's pretty it's pretty exciting because we've seen a lot of people get some help. Um, I've uh, been able to go to some mental health facilities and uh, talk to over 400 people there and, and see uh, see some people that uh, uh, you know 
hopefully it brings some life change, but at least some some immediate change for them. So are you you doing uh, like uh, are you doing like, like books? Uh, your, is your book out then? So are you doing oh, like yeah. book settings? Yeah, or, uh, the, the book's been out. Uh, I think uh, three months, four months now. I'm not sure the exact release date. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm doing a fair amount of book signings at uh, you know bookstores, uh, local places. Uh, but through that, um, uh, I'm getting appointments to go and speak at you know, either uh, churches, mental health facilities, um, political rallies. Uh, the book's kind of vast. It touches a you know a lot of different topics, and uh, it has kind of drawn me in in a lot of directions. And I've been uh, you know a little surprised at um, you know how it's uh, affected people that I didn't even perceive that it would, and that's opened up doors to go to you know di different places, even uh, police unions. I've gone to a few of those. How's that been? Uh, so, like, when you walk into the uh, a police union, is that like a, you go into a ballroom or something, or like a, well, that's kind of what more, I picture. Yeah, it's kind of like a like an office room setting or a break room type setting. Uh, they're they're smaller crowds, uh, but it's uh, uh, it's been you know somewhat surreal to hear people that uh, uh, that are open uh, to hear what you've gone through and your plight. Uh, that are looking for change, uh, that, that are looking for training for their people that actually care about public, uh, you know, bullying and how, uh, um, you know, people have endured and uh, and especially at the, the hand of, of their own enforcement. So what, what kind of bullying are, are we talking about here? How's that working too? Is that, <laughs> is that kind of a big part of what your, your book and your message is? Yeah, I'll kind of give you a, a brief overview, like a cliff note version. Um, okay. Um, I pretty much had what I would have told you was a one of the picture perfect, you know, postcard type families. You know, four kids, the the, the white picket fence, the dog. You know, and uh, I, I had a wife that uh, uh, was my best friend, uh, crazy in love with. Uh, we were together for thirteen years, and uh, woke up one morning to a noise of her committing suicide. And uh, my daughter and I found her. And uh, from that day on, life, you know, as, as you would expect, was upside down. Um, and what uh, I never would have thought unfolded, not only were her taking her life, I never would have expected that. She was the happiest person I'd, I'd ever met. I mean, she, she'd walk into a room and you'd automatically be drawn to her. Uh, she just had such a big personality. And... Um, finding out after that that she was living another life and uh, she'd been having some affairs and um, what it led to the bullying was that some of those boyfriends and her family got together and started websites that accused me of murder. And uh, it, uh, oh, it, it, shit. yeah, it, uh, it affected my life tremendously. Cause you know, once you put that out in social media, you can't reel it back. And, uh, you know, the average person out there, they read it. And, uh, well, now it's gospel because it's on uh, it's on social media. Right. And uh, then uh, they, they were able to get up a campaign where they were calling my work and uh, and, and sending anonymous letters to my work. Um, they were going uh, uh, and able to infiltrate my kids' school. Uh, you know, all kids pretty much have social media on their phones. I was affecting my kids. My kids are being bullied. Uh, and now then I started getting death threats you know, we woke up one day and uh, we had murder painted on our house and uh, all of our tires cut. And I think we're about 50 tires been slashed now. So uh, that's what I was referring to as bullying, because then they started calling defects, uh, saying that my kids were abused, um, saying that uh, um, uh, calling the, the police department, uh, just making all types of allegations and sending the police, uh, using the police department as as a tool. And, um, and well, of course, uh, there's always uh, opinions and personalities in the police department. And some of them took on the social media personalities and we had trouble with them. And I had to overcome all of that. And it's been six and a half years and, uh, you know, many, many court dates. And uh, finally we come through the backside and decided to write a book and tell our story. And, uh, and then, uh, even before we wrote the book, the movie rights was purchased. Oh, okay. and then so, I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack here, and I don't, 
I, you know, I don't know what you've said on other podcasts and I don't want to try to, you know, have too much of a, I rather have people go and like go off to those. So you're not kind of telling the same story over. Right. Um, so, I mean, like what, I mean, yeah, I mean, cause you're already, you know, in the public, like as guilty as, as, you know, and like what, I don't even know what, what can happen. And like, how do you even like, there's not a lot of stories of people persevering and coming back through that. Like, it's just sort of. Oh yeah. There were, there, I mean, man, there, there was days that, that I sat, man. Uh, um, and, and this is stuff that I've not shared, uh, man. There was days that I sat and I thought that, that I was absolutely destroyed from a financial standpoint from, uh, uh, you know, my, my reputation was destroyed. Uh, man, I, I, I thought people were going to, you know, take my family from me. Uh, man, I, there, there was days I wanted to give up, man. Uh, but, uh, you, you can imagine how heavy this was. As, you know, some of the men uh, petitioned me in court saying that they thought that my daughter was theirs and had uh, photos where they were with my wife at about the same time frame that they would have produced my daughter. Um, so, Mentally, uh, psychologically, man, I, I was struggling. Uh, man, I, uh, I, I, I didn't know if I, I could survive this. And um, spiritually, I was down. You know, I, I was raised, uh, you know, in a very religious home. Uh, and man, I, I, I thought heaven was brass. You know, God was a million miles away. Uh, uh, people in the church were, were on websites talking bad about me. And I felt, man, alone. I felt isolated that, uh, that, that nobody cared. Uh, and uh, I mean, I had days where uh, I, I stayed drunk, you know, for for days in a row, and I had uh, really no no light at the end of the tunnel. And it it you know it really took uh, a while for me to be able to get my bearings straight and uh, be able to pull out and uh, and and overcome all that was hitting me because it was hitting at once. I, I mean, like a tsunami. Right. And so did you end up staying in the same area or did you end up leaving the area at all or? Stayed in the same area. I, I, I was stubborn enough uh, to not run. Um, and many people said, man, why, why don't you leave and go to another state and, and, and get away from this? But we had done nothing wrong, you know, um, and, and I didn't feel like I needed to run because I, I didn't have anything to run from other than, than people just, just, you know, being assholes to us. And, oh, wow. uh, and, uh, you know, they were the ones in the wrong, and I felt like they should be ashamed. You know, here they are bullying a family that's trying to mourn a loss. And, uh, you know, I, I lost my, my wife and best friend, and kids lost their mom. And now we're having to deal with this. And uh, in every place that I go to work or had a contract to, I lost it quickly because people were now afraid, you know, just for the, the uh, fact that, that uh, well, what if? You know, that's what I was having to deal with. Well, we, we're not saying that you did anything, but what if or people are uncomfortable to be around you? Um, so, I mean, I was on an island and I thought, well, man, if I can't work, how am I going to take care of my kids? Well, I had a, a an ex-wife that was keeping me in court now for child support that I, mean, I couldn't even make a dollar. So, man, I, I was getting snowed under every way possible. And, uh, man, that, there was some days I'm like, man, I, why don't I do what she did? You know, why, why not just give up right here? And it's, there's no way of winning. There's no way of overcoming it because I, I'm tried and convicted in, in, in the public eye, which, uh, you, you know, when, uh, when you get canceled, I mean, you're, you're done. And, uh, right. I, I, I told myself, I, I, I sat one day and I said, you know, I, I played football for, for many years. And I said, I, I, I never run from the hit. I, I never run from the fight. And my kids need me. They don't have anybody else. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to buckle down because I love my family. And uh, I didn't run from the, the persecution. I didn't run from, from any of it. And uh, uh, there was many times that uh, we, we'd be in a restaurant. And uh, I'll, I'll share the story with you. Um, my kids and I, we, uh, we were out of Longhorns here in our, our local small towns. You know, small towns are the worst when something like this happens. Man, we're sure. sitting out of Longhorns and uh, having a rough day, man. It's like, you know, it is when you lose somebody, you'll, you'll have some good moments and you can laugh. Then all of a sudden somebody will have a memory or, 
uh, and then that they break down. Well, when one of your kids starts crying, and it, it's kind of a domino effect. You know, the rest of them will start crying. Well, it, it affects dad too when you see your baby hurt, and uh, you know, watching all four of your kids suffer. Then uh, we're sitting there at the table. This man walks up. I'd never seen in my life, and he says, uh, "Sir, I know, I, I know you." And I, I said, "Sir, I, you know, I apologize. I don't, I don't recognize you." I said, uh, "Where, where do I know you from? Is it, you know, is it from church? Is it work?" And he goes. You know, that guy killed his wife and my kids are sitting at the table and I, I heard a noise. And when I turned my oldest son, which uh, he's a golden glove boxer had planted his foot in the middle of the table and was jumping and was about to just beat this guy. And I, 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 I was on the edge of a circular booth and I turned and I caught him in midair. I set him down where I'm facing him. The guy's right at my back and I was standing face to face. He got tears running down his eyes. I was like, I was like, Austin, you can't. I said, you can't. And I said, you think I don't want to turn around and beat this guy down right now? I said, but you can't because it makes us in their eyes what they're saying we are. And Austin said he deserves it. I said, oh, yeah, he does. He deserves it. But we can't. And I turned around to the guy. I said, sir, it would be best for you to leave before I let him go or do it myself. And uh, the manager heard it. You, you can imagine everybody in the restaurant stopped eating. I mean, it's silent, and, and, and we look like we're we're assholes now. You know, the manager come up. He had heard what happened. He he kicked the guy out, comped their meal. But when they sat down, we couldn't even eat. Man, it was just it had upset everybody. And we didn't even touch our food. We sat there a little while and then just came home. Um, so I mean, that's just one of the the many many stories that we had to deal with uh, for for years. And um, Rusty, if I'd have been out with you. Let's say uh, you and I just went and Starbucks, grabbed a coffee or went somewhere and grabbed a sandwich and uh, somebody saw you. They had a social media so strong, they would have uh, started contacting you saying, do you know who you were with? Uh, if you've got children, and be like, you've got your children in, in jeopardy. Defects would have been at your house the next day saying you're unfit because you had your children around a murder, whether you they're around me or not. Now, now defects cases started on you. So that was happening to every, anybody I was around. So when it comes to a point where I tried to start dating, they were putting a nix to it. I mean, like instantly, I, I, I couldn't associate with anybody uh, because anybody that saw me out, as soon as they saw me, they were reporting it on social media. Hey, Andy's, you know, he, he's over here at, at a, uh, you know, shopping at, at such and such or, uh, he's at this restaurant, and they're reporting it, <clears throat> posting photos of my every whereabouts, running tag numbers of people that were with me. Well, who can run tag numbers? Only the police. So they had a, a police officer on the inside that would run tag numbers, post address of people. So any of the, my female friends, they felt extremely unsafe now having their address posted, their names. So, I mean, the assault on this was absolutely relentless. And uh, it, it took me a while and some some lawsuits to finally get them at bay. Well, were you ever charged with anything? Or I was, was this even, just the public court? The public the court. Public, I was never you. even listed. Never even listed as a suspect. Never. This was just one hundred percent. Holy shit! People getting together and and starting this and uh, just trying to ruin somebody because they had it in their mind. And uh, what they based it on is a. Uh, um, supposedly, now, I, I don't know if there's any facts to it, but my wife has sent them some emails or letters to the, there was 10 men that she was having an affair with over, over the course of our, our marriage. Then, uh, told them they, that she loved them. She was going to go live with them. And, um, uh, that, that I was a bad person, uh, which we never even fought. It was, it was, but you know, when a woman's having an affair, they'll say whatever to whoever, because she was getting money from them and, uh, gifts, uh, had keys to houses. So for whatever reason that she was doing that, they believed what she was saying, but all 10 of them felt like she was coming to live with them. So obviously I'm a bad person. Um, so they had in their mind that she was telling all of them the truth, even though she was lying to all 10 of them, it had to be true. And what she was telling us was a lie. Uh, so in, in the book, I put our last three months of text messages and emails and, and, and published them in the book. So are they, 
like pictures of the text messages or are they yeah. like yeah they're they're, they're photos like of, of the text messages you can see the last one she sent was i love you the last photo on her phone is is us holding hands um our last night together she fixed my favorite meal you know and uh, and my daughter took photos of, uh, of me giving her a piggyback ride through the house i mean uh i never i never saw any of it coming and uh, that was the hardest part for me and uh, kind of recovering was not only did I lose my wife, now I've got to deal with the the affairs and, and my marriage was not what I thought that it was. And um, and I couldn't go to her and ask her, you know, uh, you know, what was going on here? You know, what what was I couldn't go go yell. I couldn't get any of it out. So what did you do uh, in lieu of that? Uh, well, I and cried a lot. At, at first, uh, and then you know, finally, I got to to a place where um, I could, you know, I, I, I could pray again, and um, you know that that helped me. Um, but it uh, it took me years to get to a point to where I could just accept it for what it was. That uh, my marriage was not what I thought it was, um, and and that's okay. You know, um, sometimes life's not what we think it is or what we want it to be. We make the best of what we have and go forward. What was it that got you to start praying or to accept or and or to accept what that it was, what it was? Yeah, thank you for asking. That. Nobody's asked that question at all. Um, I had a therapist, uh, well, not a therapist, but actually a, a doctor, a psychologist um, that I saw. She was a former JAG officer in the military, and uh, she she gave up the law portion because so many soldiers was dealing with PTSD and, and committing suicide when they got out. So she went into psychology. I mean, that's and, the number uh, one. Oh yeah, reason of death in the armed forces. Yes, sir. So Sorry, uh, somebody turned me on to her and uh, she's a very direct talker. And that's what I needed. Like if I was having a pity party, I mean, she'd be like, you, you need to just cut that shit out. I mean, she talked it very direct to me and I, that's, I needed somebody that would just cut, you know, and, and, right. and, and not listen to me talk, but actually talk back and, and give me direction and, and advice. And um, here's what she said to me that helped me. She said, Andy, do you walk backwards through your house? And I said, you know what? What kind of what kind of question is that? I'm like, that's silly. I'm, no, I don't walk backwards through my house. She said, why not? I said, because if uh, if I walk backwards through my house, then I, I can't see where I'm going. I, I would fall down. Uh, I said, it, it makes no sense for me to walk backwards through my house. And she just stopped and looked at me. And it seemed like the, the longest pause. She said, Andy, why are you living your back, your life looking backwards? She said, when you look backwards, she said, there's nothing back there but the pain, the hurt, and it's never going to change. It is what it is. She said, you've got these four kids that are dependent on you, that need you, and you have goals that you told me in here that you set, that you want to accomplish, short-term goals and long-term goals. They're in front of you. She said, turn your butt around, face forward, and go. Quit looking back. There's no, nothing back there but pain. But I could visualize it. And when she said it that way, I could see it, and it come home to me. And uh, I quit drinking that day. I, I, I quit doing the stuff that I was doing to, to kind of, like, soothe the pain. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and I picked myself up because she connected with me with just that very, very simple way. And uh, and that helped a lot. What? Um, so I mean, what, what was it when was we able to kind of work work through it, and then, or was it just like, like let's say something comes up with this again? Is it like, like are you kind of ex like experiencing it over again, or have you been able to go through it enough where? It's, um, no, I don't know, like, not as impactful as it once was. Uh, well, early on, it, it was devastating. You know, when you Absolutely. you turn on and you see yourself on the news, and you know, and uh, uh, and, and it's big. It but 
now the only thing that, that you hear is what you've already heard a thousand times. There, there's nothing that's impactful because they don't have anything else to say. They've repeated themselves so much that it, it's so redundant that uh, they've lost some of their own followers because uh, th- there's nothing new. And uh, no, it, uh, it it doesn't bother me at all like it did. And now our platform is so much bigger than them um, that used to, they, they could overshadow me and uh, you know, it, it affect the, the people around me, uh, affect my work. Well, now, my, you know, because of uh, uh, the way that I've been blessed and uh, where we are, uh, we're, we're larger and our voice is bigger. And uh, what they've done uh, is so appalling uh, that uh, it, it's such a negative light on them that uh, it, it doesn't affect us uh, really at all anymore. Uh, and um, the, the more that they bark and uh, the more noise they make, it actually helps tell our story because it sells more books. And, uh, and it, it has got me into places now where more people get help. Uh, I get people that, that call me all the time uh, to go speak at suicide prevention places to tell our story. Uh, and, and, and we've, we've seen a lot of people help. So, uh, I, I don't care if they keep talking now or, or not, because all it's doing is it's helping promote the story. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm for getting it out there. You know, uh, the, the, they may think that they're hurting me, but they're actually helping at this point. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, even, even bad publicity is still publicity and it's still going to you know, it's best just not to say anything. Like, uh, it's it's easy to go and just be like, oh, okay, here's all this negative shit about them. But at the same time, then what's that gonna do? Right. I mean, for for you and um, yeah, I had a when, lawyer. Oh, go ahead. I had a lawyer. I really wanted to fight back so hard. I'm like, man, I, I've, I've got to rebut this. I'm, they're saying this about me. And I had a lawyer told me this. He said, uh, Andy, shit does not stink as bad if you don't stomp it. And he said, every time you go after one of them, he said, there's going to be 10 more that rise up because now you've martyred one and it's making you look bad. He said, be quiet. Sit back in the silence. Be quiet. There'll come a day you tell your story. Today's not the day. And um, that was great advice uh, because uh, I, I would have just hurt myself. I'd have hurt my children if I would have tried to fight every fight. Right. Um, and so when you were going and doing uh, talks and um, anything of that sort, do you have a, a speech that you bring with you or are you just going off of whatever when you go and do this or is it change um, for each, each it, it changes for, for each place i mean i have a you know the story i mean i i'm telling our story but it, it's geared to where i'm going to be and for the audience uh you know it's i don't go on with a powerpoint and then you know tell the same you know the, the same thing not not at right. all um i i try to make it fit you know, who's there because I want it to be the most impactful that I possibly can be to help. Uh, especially, uh, I feel a, a huge weight when I, I'm talking to the, the mental health side. Uh, you know, I, I was, I've spent time talking to the doctors and the nurses that are dealing with it. Um, and then uh, the families of people that are trying to, you know, the, they're at a point wanting to give up. You think uh, people that are suicidal, a lot of them are, are alcoholics or drug addicts and you know, what that leads to on a family, they've, they've stole money from them. You know, they've been in and out of rehabs and it's, uh, it's just a drain on a family. And finally a family gets to the part where they just want to throw their hands up and quit. And that's when a lot, it'll push a lot of people to a, a point of, I have nowhere to go. That This is my only resort. Um, and then I get to talk to the, the patients themselves. But uh, what's changed here, we, we mentioned the soldiers. Uh, soldiers used to be our number one demographic of, uh, of suicide in America. And then it was uh, law enforcement and, uh, and health care. And uh, health care rose during COVID. But right now, number one is my age group. It's dads. Uh, dads leading families uh, has jumped drastically in the past year and, and is leading suicide in percentages. Uh, you think, uh, you know, COVID caused people to, to lose jobs, 
and uh, you know all the weight of just just being you know the, the head of a family and the stresses of it are going through a divorce and, and men losing their kids uh, and now you know they're, they're, they've got all the stresses of that. There's so many men that uh, that are committing suicide and uh, you know we touch on that because you know, I've, I've had both sides of it that's in the book. So when I go and speak to these groups, uh, there's a huge weight on my shoulder that. You know, I want to make sure that I, I don't speak one out of word, but I'm able to to leave leaving them with, with some help and some encouragement that there there is a way out that uh, that you, you can't overcome it and be better. And so when. So what usually happens after you get off the your stage or, you know, platform or whatever you're on when you go and you say all right thank you and i mean do you usually take time to decompress or are you still riding that high and going off and talking to as many people as you can right afterwards well i, I go down with them and talk to them afterwards because normally there's people with a story or uh uh and they're they're coming up and uh you know they, they have something that they want to share or in a in a bad place and, uh, you know, we have uh, people there that are trained to deal with that. But uh, being the, the, the mouthpiece, you know, I'm the first one there and they can direct them to get the proper help that they need because I'm not a psychologist at, at all. Uh, but I, I'm there to give the initial. Uh, and I definitely want to be there to hear and to share uh, for that. Uh, but when it's over with, there's a, uh, I feel like I ran a marathon. You know, because it's uh, it's so heavy, and, and and I mean, I take it so seriously. Um, when you feel like there really lies in the balance when you're speaking, and that if uh, you know you don't connect, that somebody could be dead that day or tomorrow. I mean, it's. I yeah. mean, it's a, it's a weight. Um, so no, normally I go sit down and I just I just take a few minutes uh, or, or hours, you know, and just. And, and and try to shed that because it's heavy. Yeah, and so I mean, like, I couldn't imagine it being easy to do, you know, like if you were doing a different one of those every day, I feel like you'd have to take at least, you know, a certain amount of time. Uh, is that something that you're experiencing? Have you had any, like, where you were booking – like they were, they were booking you too often at like, uh, and you had to kind of step back and kind of space those out more or are you okay doing every day or. Well, I've, um, I've not stepped back. Um, I, I have times where I've been every day for you know a couple of weeks and then I have a break and then every day, I, but I don't think I would turn down an opportunity um, I would go every day and uh, because in my mindset was, well, if, if I took I took a day, what if that was the day I needed to be that, that I, I could have made a difference or our story could have helped or my children's story. But my kids, you know, they, they go with me to most of these uh, when they speak. It's extremely powerful, especially my daughter, because she was there uh, when I found her mom. We were together. Uh, and, and when she speaks, it's gripping. It's extremely telling. Um, you know, uh, you'll hear a lot of people uh, that's at a point of suicide say their their mindset is, "Well, people be better off without me." You know, uh, you know my children, my family, they're better off without me. I'm a burden, or I'm causing this on them. And uh, when my daughter speaks, she's 14 now. Uh, she she's every time is very tearful when she speaks. Uh, she'll say, now, would I have been better off if my mom lived or now that she's gone, look what it's caused our family. Look what we've had to go through, changing schools. Look what my dad's had to go through. Who was better off? And uh, when she goes through and starts hitting the detail, it's uh, it, it's a, a extremely powerful uh, way to connect, especially with moms. You know that that's there that that's gone through this, and a lot of them have attempted suicide or are at that point. And she's able to reach out and grab their hearts, especially they got babies out there, 
and uh, and and she she promotes uh, you know a lot of change in in the thinking for these people. And so I mean, she's going up before you. I I take it. Um, I mean, what? I, how do you even get out there after she's up there? I mean, like. Oh, I I I, 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 I don't. Um, I mean, yeah. You got to think how you know how emotional this is. Uh, but at, at every, every time I, you know any of my children stand you know, and they're they're sharing their heart. I mean this this is our life, you know, and they're sharing their heart. You know, you know they never say the exact same thing, uh, but they're they're telling the the same story of what they've experienced. Uh, but when you see the emotion hit and uh, feel the pain in their their eyes, uh, man, I I weep with them, um, and uh, it's it's hard to see them do that, but. The reason why they're doing it is to help other people. I mean, I, I, I would hate to think that we went through all of this hell. I mean, and it, Kyle, I, I, hell is an understatement you know, of what we've had to endure for six and a half years at the hand of people that that claim they're good good people. On, on, on website says they're they're destroying us, putting Bible verses under it in Jesus' name, you know. Right. Uh, and, you know, here we are and you, you see your kids up there and uh, they're, they're talking through that pain for only one reason. If it helps one life, if it stops one person from doing that to somebody else, you know, if it changes the direction of you wanting to go and hurt somebody else behind a keyboard or, are you taking up arms against somebody on a story you don't even know against people you've never even met? Well, I applaud my children for having that strength to go and, and care enough to want to help other people. And so have any of these people that kind of shit all over everything, have any of them reached out to you and apologized or, um, or what was the time? Was there something that uh, my guess is that there was something they saw where you did something in a positive light was when people started to come out of the woodwork and apologize if it had gotten that at all. There's a, there's been a few of them. Uh, some, some of the very key people have. And uh matter of fact, I had one last week who was, I mean, um, posting videos, talk, I mean, golly, like, talking awful about me. Call said, I just got to say one thing. I'm extremely sorry for my actions. Um, I don't think you can probably ever forgive me, but I just want you to know I'm just extremely sorry and uh, and, and, and tell your children that I'm sorry. Um, it doesn't right the wrong, but I'm appreciative that at least the heart's changing. You know, uh, humanity is awful today. I mean, you, you look at how, how we just want to destroy people for for so many stupid reasons, man, the color of their skin or or what faith they are, and and, and we want to just destroy people. Uh, and I don't I don't understand why we're that way, especially to take up, you know, arms against a family that's suffering because somebody said something, and, and you believe it without facts or or what they say is facts. And uh, when uh, when they come back and, uh, and and apologize, I do appreciate it. Yeah, and so I mean, what was like kind of the first thing that someone was like? What was it? pretty soon after what happened that they went after you like did they start they tag you in some facebook post or something or you yeah, start it, getting things from friends yeah right right after the funeral uh right after the funeral uh the, there was a, a, a memorial page that went up and it was under the uh they wanted to look like that they, they were just trying to honor her but what they were doing is they were drawing people in and then sending private messages out to everybody. But, Hey, do you know that uh, we don't think that she committed suicide? We think that, uh, you know, her husband actually had something to do with this. And, uh, you know, here's why, you know, and then they start taking stuff and trying to make it look so ominous. And, and they're like, well, you know, there's some questions about this. Well, you can make anything look the way you want to, when, when you're twisting it and well that's what they did man they put together some great stories and and when you sit back and look at it you, know, you if you don't know any of the facts or anything about it well doggone man is go lock me up and that's what they were doing and uh the, they had people actually calling the sheriff's department i don't mean like just one or two i mean like hundreds from other states 
that had never even met us, didn't know my wife, never met me, didn't know, know me, never connected on social media, was calling and reading their scripts that they had sent. A lot telling them. And because when I talked to the detectives, they'd be like, man, look, everybody says the same thing, like they're reading it. And he said, we've got these. And he'd just tell them, he'd tell me the names that they're from. Uh, and he's like, this is what they're saying. He's like, everybody's saying the same thing. He's like, because they're, they're scripted. And I'm like, well, do you know where they're getting it from? They're like, yeah, we've ran the IP addresses. We, we know what's going on. And he said, but by the way, the reason why we're talking to you is because uh, you've got a couple of death threats that we think some of these you need to be concerned about. And our family, we, there's been times that we had to just up and take a immediate vacation, just up and leave because they told us that they felt like some of these people were going to act. And so I mean, what what happens then? I mean, you just are, are you online looking for a flight somewhere right away and and we take out or hop in a car and just drive three or four states over. Um, and I, I've had to have security for my kids. Uh, uh, there's There's been people that surrounded my middle son, who at the time was 16 year old, surrounded his Jeep, beating on the windows, uh, trying to trying to fight him, all because of what they heard on social media about me. So, it, uh, I mean, it it got it got really really awful for a while and very scary. Uh, so I had to hire security any, any of where my, my children went, people that, that would be there with them, even at school. And then, so, I mean, what did that do with, with them? I mean, like, how does th that even, I don't know. Cause I mean, I, I assume seeing someone with security with them as a, you know, in, in school, there's yeah, going to be lots of questions and lots yeah, of, they didn't, they didn't walk down the hallways with them and go to class. But they uh, they stayed out in the parking lot next to their cars, you know, because uh, people would follow them, uh, and they made sure that they were with them, so nobody was following them. Um, you know, my kids were always extremely active in sports. You know, great grades. After this, their grades started dipping. Uh, started getting in fights at school because kids were coming up and saying awful things to them. And uh, you know, you can only take it so much. And uh, so right. I pulled them out of those schools, put them in, uh, in in private private schools where we had more control, and uh, I was able to have a better security. And uh, uh, you know the the school understood what what our plight was and were, would help us. Public schools didn't care; they didn't care at all. It was it was just like you know that that that's part of life. They need to learn to deal with it. I'm like, are you serious? No. So I mean, where were the public schools like? I mean, were they I mean, were your kids going to the principal's office or anything like say anything or, or, you oh, know, yeah. like, Hey, like what's, there's some people that are saying some stuff or, you know, threatening to do some stuff. And then, so the school, were they just not acting and just Absolutely. Would it be kind of, I even went to the principal's office and said, Hey, th these are the kids they are saying this to my children. And uh, I mean, it's escalating and, and I'm afraid if it continues, that uh that it'll get physical then the school will be like well we'll look into it we'll, we'll make sure we're on top of it and you know that to my knowledge they did pretty much nothing you know right and so i mean how long did it take before your name was able to in your mind be change to what it should be and not what oh well there's, was there there's a turning still, point yeah there's still some places right now that uh that that people you know i go out they you know i, I get the evil stare you know and uh, uh because the social media is so powerful um but really when when the book came out and started uh started gaining traction and people read the book um now I, my, my lawyers really watch those sites uh because all that's said on it um you know people are like we're not going to read the book but almost everybody on there bought a book and uh well when they read it and actually started seeing the truth and uh and understanding what really happened well it backed down and uh and, and a lot of it stopped i mean just completely stopped and 
Uh, we, we go out now, we don't have hardly anybody say anything. You know, very rarely do we have the trouble that we did. Uh, now people will come up and, and say nice things or, hey, I, I read the book. Man, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. And man, it's been a long, long drought since we had you know any positive uh, or, or encouraging. Uh, but I, I, I really think that's finally been able to tell our story and people hear it. Um, that's what made the change because I'm I, I didn't just author this book, my entire family wrote the book. So, you when you're reading, um, you know, in a chapter, you'll see it'll stop. You'll see like my daughter's name, and you you see her writing. It we didn't change her verbiage. It's in it's in her words, and then I, you know, all of my sons wrote. Um, so when you go through that and and you hear from their perspective what happened, um, my daughter wrote a. Uh, um, a, a chapter and it's called if i'd only known and uh that, that that's probably one of the most gripping chapters in the entire book and so have your any of your children gone the writing route after this or have they thought about or um we have uh um we've been approached we're writing two more books for next year uh we had a publisher come to us um so we are writing two more books uh, and uh my daughter is um uh, being cast as a lead in two movies from this okay so oh wow all right um and so how are they is it is that helping them each time they're able to tell the story or do you think that it's i mean because it, it's kind of a could go kind of both ways but i mean like telling the story is always such a big part of the healing process and um it, it um it has been uh helpful to healing um to get it out because really at, at home um we didn't talk about it much uh, you know verbally uh for six months we all just slept in the floor in a pallet in a living room where we could just touch each other for comfort uh and i would go to sleep listen to the sounds of my kids sniffles and cries um but we didn't want to be apart and um but nobody really you know shared hey you know dad i'm hurting you know especially because their ages you know you they, they don't communicate like adults and uh and of course if i ever talked or broke down that it it, it was 10 times on them. So I tried to suck that up around them and just be a pillar for my children. Um, so now what I'm, what I'm seeing is every time that they talk and they see other people get help, they're stronger. And uh, it, uh, it is, it has really helped us come a long way being able to do this part of it and say, you know what, there, maybe there was an overall purpose. And, uh, and, and this purpose was, if we're, if we're helping save lives, helping encourage people, help promote change in, in government and in policies, then I'm not going to say it was worth it. And I'm not going to say we enjoyed it, but I'm going to say I'm glad that now we can be a, a mouthpiece to help others. And so when people want to find your book or find ways to contact you or find ways to find out you know more about you, anything you're doing how are they going to do that um you can contact me directly on any of my social media and uh if you contact me then uh the kids and myself will sign it and send it out overnight uh but you can get the book anywhere you can get on amazon walmart.com barnes and nobles books a million uh you can go directly to the publisher who is colorful crow uh, the book has a website connected to the publisher and it's called who turned up the silence.com. And uh, it's the name of the book. And uh, uh, man, I, I hope everybody reads it and um, then, and shares it um, not just for uh, the, the purpose of, of, of us promoting the book, but because it's a tool to help others. And, uh, and we're using the proceeds from the book to go to the suicide prevention. So yeah, that seems like a big help for for a lot of people and able to yeah get that story out to as many people because yeah, like you said, one person is one person, 
And yes. that's more than enough. Right. So that's all you needed to do. Anything else is a bonus. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy you've done that. And I'm happy we got to have this talk and um, get to know you and get to know your story. And um, yeah, um, it'd be yeah, it'd be nice to get you back at some point if, if you like. Um, and I don't know if you're, your family, if they'd want to get in on it as well, yeah. or if, if they're kind of away, Absolutely. you know, if, yeah. If, if you want to bring them on, it'd be interesting. Yeah. To get the whole, everyone there. So yeah. The the entire family would, would, would they'd glad to be on uh, that. They, they've, they've attended others and uh, that they, they, they would absolutely be on and uh, share their story with you. And, uh, okay. and I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me today. And yeah. we'd love to come back. Sounds great. Yeah. I'd love to have you back. So um, yeah, have a great rest of your day and yeah, enjoy the rest of Monday. Cause it's Monday. Monday's great. So yes, enjoy sir. it. All Thank right. You. Take care. You bet. All right. That's Andy Turner. So yeah, I, like I said, you guys, I never know what's going to happen. He asked if he wanted to have me look at what was going on before. And like, I told him, I don't, I don't want to know. I want to, like I want a real reaction. Like that's that's some. I don't want to pretend on this show. Like I guess saying for like one person that gets this, and one person that gets to experience what's going on. I don't want to be faking what I'm experiencing or, or what I'm, you know, seeing. Like you can't see me, like because it's only like a speaker view on this on this show. Like, you can't see that I'm what I'm reacting to as much unless I say something right off the bat. But yeah, you guys check out, check out his story and you know, social media can, can fuck people up fast. The, the opinion of the public is, is one thing and can do a lot really fast. So you yeah, watch out, watch out. Don't, don't be so jump to jump on everything and yeah, make sure that, yeah, you look out for other people. So thank you everyone for listening to the public access podcast on the Rusty Diamond Podcast Network. And that is the show. Man, boom. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker.